Okay, let's get to some of our questions. Dr. McGeer, this first one goes to you. What happens when our frontline doctors and nurses get sick? Who replaces them? All hospitals have pandemic plans um, for how they're going to respond to an increased number of patients and, and how they can be managed. Part of that, as we've seen, is about canceling elective surgery, trying to make sure that we, we minimize the number of other patients in the hospitals so that we can provide health care. Part of it is about retraining of some of us so that we can get back into health care. You know, what AI can do for us, what technology can do for us that makes us work more efficiently. Um, so in truth, there's a whole long list of things and all hospitals are working on them so that we make sure that um, we can both replace healthcare providers um, should they be off sick for a while, um, but also so that we can respond to being able to be being needed to take care of more patients. Mm. Okay, good insight there. Uh, Dr. Barrett, this next one's a, a tough one, a contentious one, I should say. What's the straight goods on masks? Are we just being told not to wear them out of fear we'll start hoarding them? The straight goods are not that we're trying to keep all of our protective equipment for just healthcare workers. But this is also a question of what a mask does. And there's two things. There's particles getting out from the person wearing the mask and there's virus potentially getting in. And the reason we haven't yet told everyone in Canada to wear a mask all the time is that number one, we haven't had as many cases and the amount of risk to experience virus in the community has been lower until recently in most places. And the second part is that masks can actually be harmful and provide a false sense of security. You need to know how to take them off properly. And we need to know that the kind you're using works. And we don't know both of those things right now. If you use a mask improperly, it can be dangerous. And if there's not a lot of virus around you in the community, this community shedding idea, if there's not enough virus around, the risk is not worth the benefit. Okay, very good information there. Uh, Dr. McGear, we have time for one more quick one. What would signal that things are starting to get better? The, the first thing we're looking for, things starting to get better, is that the number of new cases every day is going down. Now, at, at the moment, that's really hard to judge because our testing is ramping up. And of course, if you test more people, then you're gonna find more cases. We're having some trouble keeping up with testing. So maybe things will look better for a day just because um, one of the labs had trouble with reagents and is a little bit behind and then, then it'll look bigger the next day. Um, so so you, it, it's actually, you can't actually look uh, every day and, and know for sure what's going on. But overall, we're aiming for the, Firstly, the number of new cases every day either staying the same or going down as opposed to going up. Okay. We're going to have to cap it off there. Dr. McGeer, Dr. Barrett, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.